Hello and welcome to the next video of my summer 2022 preview for the LCK. We're covering Kwang Dong Freaks. If you haven't followed along, I've already put out five videos um, over the last five days of the bottom half of what I believe the LCK to be going into summer. Um, the Freaks finished sixth uh, in spring, going 11 and 7, and their Challengers team on 20 and 16, finishing fifth. Uh, they didn't make any moves at the top level. Bring up Moham was the only one. Uh, as a sub substitute and support um courage joins as a uh, option for them in the academy team map c and valkyrie 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 no not valkyrie 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 um both are uh, inactive so kdf uh if you didn't watch my previous videos when it comes to uh, NS Red Force, DRX, uh, Fred at Brian, for that matter. Um, all these teams in the fourth through eighth range could be anyone's game going into the LCK. It felt like musical chairs during spring. Whoever was fourth would be eighth in two weeks, and vice versa. Uh, it was all over the damn place. Um, KDF, uh, Keen, obviously, has been with the organization for a very long time since they were the Afrika Freaks. Um, very, very good top laner. One of the best top laners in the world in some people's eyes. Um, 8.45 CS per minute while playing 16 different champions across 42 matches in the top lane. Keen is an elite top laner, the best player on the team without a doubt. Um, gets into fights at 58% of the time and holds a high uh, CS per minute in the 8 to 8.5 range that you expect out of the best top laners. 20% kill share, 22.4% gold share, because he gets a ton of gold. It'd be nice to see more kills for him so he can carry games. Um, Ilma, I'm going to say Ilma. Uh, honestly, it could be Ilma. I don't really know. There's five things that either look like capital I's or lowercase L's. Um, I think that's on purpose. So, uh, 853 CS per minute, very good. 53 KP. Um, in the middle range there, near 55%. Um, very, very good player. Is definitely stuck behind Keen, though. It'd be nice um, to see him get an opportunity elsewhere. Maybe this team could have looked to improve at support, possibly moving him elsewhere um, to another team. But very good in, in the Challenger League. 22.6% gold share, 21.7% kill share. Played nine champions in 35 games. Obviously playing 1v1s against each other. I imagine that only makes the academy player better. So, um, scrimming against Keen all the time. Jungle, Alum. Um, Alum, definitely a weak spot on this team. I'm not a fan of his. His farming was subpar 4.58 this past split under 3 KDA. 66.3% KP, so not even 70%. Not making things happen. Not farming to get ahead. 17% kill share and gold share. Maybe jungle was also a possibility where this team could have improved. Played 10 champions in 42 games. Definitely a weak part of this team. Citrus behind him. Not all that much better. However, with a 5.26 CS per minute and a near 71% KP, it's acceptable to have a player below 5.5 CS per minute if they're going to have a KP of 70 or more. At least they're doing something. They're not farming, but they're doing something. 17.5% kill share, 18.2% gold share. So similar effect on the team when it comes to kills and gold share. However, um, clearly Citrus makes things happen where Alum really isn't. Um, in summer, maybe you see a swap there, a um, attempt to give Citrus a look. Because obvi obviously, Alum struggled um, playing 10 champions, like I said, and Citrus played 8. Um, fate in mid. Uh, I feel similar to Fate, how I do Lava, Lava being better than him. Um, but 8.58 CS per minute, uh, over a 5 KDA. The solo lanes are not the problem with this team. 70% KP, very, very good. Um, I mean, this guy's really good. This is a legit team. 24.8% um, uh, kill share, 22.5% gold share, return on investments there. Played 12 champions, very good player. Bulldog behind him, not quite ready for the um, LCK yet. Still a CS per minute under 8.5. However, nearly 74% KP, so he is fighting a lot. Um, give him credit for that. Roaming, making things happen. Involving himself, may not be getting ahead in lane, but getting ahead in team fights, resulting 21.7 gold share um, and played 12 champions. 
Um, so maybe after summer, if he can work on his laning, you see Bulldog as a possibility for a uh, player to watch in 2023 um, with the mind, you know, that he has of making things happen and getting into fights and involving himself. Um, I always love a player that involves themselves. Teddy, obviously Teddy's a known commodity, one of the best um, 80 carries in the world in some people's eyes. Obviously, I wouldn't consider him um, in the top 10 uh, anymore. But a couple of years back, he definitely was in that conversation. Um, very, very good in lane. Um, gets leads, 9.7 uh, CS per minute, 5.85 KDA. 71% KP himself. 32% um, gold uh, kill share. He is the carry for KDF. If things are happening, it is going through Teddy. Um, played seven champions in 42 games. A very good player. Leo sits behind him as a sub. Leo has not played since 2021. Um Obviously, they're giving Bull, um, so they have Bulldog and Bull on their academy team. Um, when you compare the stats, Bull outplayed Leo. Um, eh, maybe not. Maybe Leo's stats are from, I don't remember if Leo's stats are from the LCK or Challenger from last year. Probably should have. Nevertheless, we can make some inferences here. So Leo and Bulldog both have over 70% KP. So the team clearly understands we have to focus bot lane, getting bot lane ahead. That is not only a top team, but a challenger team ideal as well. Um, carries all above 31.5%. Um, Leo, 24% K, uh, gold share. Bull, 24.5%. Leo, however, played nine champions at 46 games last year. Uh, Bull, 6 and 32. You'd like that to be a little bit higher, maybe to um, expand on his horizons as a. Um, you know, 80 carries because 925 CS per minute isn't where you want to be. Obviously, at a lower level, you want to reach nine and a half against lower competition to prove you can be against the top dogs in the, um, you know, top league in your region. So he improves on that, improves his champion pool, and maybe we also see Bull as a possibility for a lower tier team in 2023. Finally, support Hoyt. Um, Hoyt is okay. Uh, 33.17 KDA, 66.5 KP. Uh, played 13 champions, big champion pool. Um, you know, I don't really like when a support has less KP than the AD carry. Uh, I like that to be the opposite. I want the support to roam. I want the support to facilitate and clearly Hoyt. Um, not a massive facilitator. Then again, this team isn't a massive facilitating team. Um, very team fight oriented based on what I'm looking at here. Um, 13 champions, like I said, in 42 games. Moham played seven games in Academy, did very well, 76% KP, 3.4 KDA. Um, obviously brought him up to pressure Hoyt a bit, as well as to give Minute a um, longer leash in um, Academy. I think he did lose out to um, Moham, in my opinion. Obviously, his KP, uh, Minute played four times as many games as Moham, but his KP is 13 to nearly 14% lower. And his KDA is almost one full kill lower, which obviously um, there aren't many stats that really matter to support. Uh, to me, it's just KP and champion pool, really. Um, it's nice to see them not die and have a decent KDA, but KDA is not as important as the other two stats. Um, so I can see this team finishing fourth. I really could. Um, obviously, I don't feel like any team is at the uh, damn one T1 Gen G level, um, but... KDF have potential to be a fourth seed um, entirely going into playoffs. Um, it'll be between them and uh, KT, who's tomorrow uh, in these previews. So stay tuned for that. If you're a KDF fan, comment down, uh, comment down below with your opinions. Are you confident going into summer? Do you think that they're going to be able to outplay the other teams around their level? Um, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Like the video if you like it. And thank you for watching.